Hello again, you absolute legends. Thank you very much for joining me once again. This is Steve here, aka The Running Englishman, simply here to inspire you to be the best and fittest version of yourself. So if I can do it, I know that you can too. So today, um, this is gonna be the last of a little series of um, videos I've made all about the heart rate and how you should calculate your own zones and the reasons why you should calculate your own zones. And today's is about the heart rate reserve method and a little bit about heart rate variability later on. And there's a little bonus tip at the end of this video for a nifty little app that I found that's gonna really help you for your training and keeping yourself fresh and making sure you're not overdoing it. So stay till the end, we'll talk about that. Don't go anywhere, let's talk. <music> today um, in my opinion is a far more accurate way to work out the your own training zones to train in and I've been waffling on about these quite a lot but this is just one of this is probably one of the most popular ways um, calculations for you to make for you to work out uh, your zones to run in uh, the reason it's a good idea to roughly know your heart rate zones is once you've got that you know exactly how slow you need to run your slow runs and you know roughly about what heart rate you could run at to potentially complete a marathon or an ultra marathon without hitting that dreaded wall. And then once you've got these, you can start putting them, them sort of thresholds into practice and start to build them up. Then you can start putting work into those intensities and start getting the very best out of your running. Because if you're overworking your heart over the course of a long race, uh, the chances are you're gonna crash and burn too early, you hit that dreaded wall, or you're gonna just do not finish at all. Um, so it's definitely, in my opinion, worth working out your heart rate zones. So one of the most popular ways that people use these days to find your heart rate zones, personal to you, is called is a good method called the Carbonon or the Carbonon heart rate reserve method. So what exactly is this method? Um, the heart rate reserve describes the difference between a measured max heart rate or your predicted uh, max heart rate if you can get it close enough against your resting heart rate. Um, and this together is a good indication of your current cardiovascular fitness. And using these two measurements can be very accurate because you're using your resting heart rate, which is a measurement of your current fitness, and you're also using your max heart rate, which if, if you've tested, um, it's a sign of fitness, but it's mostly a sign of, um, or of just an indication of how high your heart can go just from the way that you're born. And for me, this has to be a more accurate way of working out your zones rather than using someone's guess or using the age-based um, calculator. And today I'm gonna to show you the simple ways for you to work out those two measurements um, so you can start to optimize your training and get the maximum out of all the running that you're gonna do. So as I mentioned, the two things you need to do this Carbon heart rate reserve calculation is your resting heart rate and your max heart rate. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail because you can make the video too long, uh, but your resting heart rate, you probably all have that already. It's probably, if you wear a watch through the night, it'll probably tell you what your number is for that. If you don't have that and not done it before, take a measurement of your pulse, uh, say count for 30 seconds as soon as you wake up and then double it so you're getting the amount of beats per minute. Do that over three days, add those three total numbers together and divide it by three to get the average for the three days. Otherwise, take the measurement from your wristwatch. To get your max heart rate, again, there's many ways to do it. Uh, please look back on my recent video of me doing one. It only was a, like a mile sprint. It's probably not the most uh, the best way to do it, but there's multiple ways to do it. Mine fell at 189. And I heard of a great tip from someone uh, who knows a lot about running, about adding two or three on if he wasn't feeling, feeling physically sick at the end. So I've rounded mine off at 192, but it's definitely a good metric to have to get your max heart rate and your resting heart rate. So once you've got these numbers, it's dead simple um, if you use a calculator. For people who do like to use numbers and they're into all the stats and all that, you can work it out with percentages, um, but no one's got time for that really. But there is there is ways you can do it. I mean, I can explain in another video, in another video but um, the best way to do it is to use the simple carbon and formula calculator. So Google that and then you stick your metrics in and then it will give you your zones. I'm going to put a picture on screen of what mine looks like when I did it. Um, so as you can see, uh, zone one, which is the warm-up zone, is 60% and below, so I'll be 137 beats per minute and below. 
Zone two is the easy one. That's exactly where you want to be doing 80% of your training. So that's like 70%, 60% to 70%. And it's 137 to 151. And you've got your zone three, which you generally stay out of um, for most of the time, which is 151 heartbeat to 164. Then you've got your zone four, which is your tempo. And it's 80 to 90%. And it's uh, 164 to 178. So that's good for your tempo fast runs. And then you've got your zone five, which is your all out. Um, obviously 178 to 192, which is my maximum heart rate. So there you have it, it's really simple. Once you've got your numbers in there, it gives you nice zones. Um, we can't just do it that simply. I've done, I did test some other things as well to see how close it would be to that. I'm just gonna see if I can put on the screen um, my heart rate reserve zones I just showed you then against my threshold test that I did about a month back and just see how they compare. So I'm gonna put them up on the screen now. So there's my threshold test alongside um, my heart rate reserved um, calculator zones there. As you can see, my easy zones fall within one of each other. So coincidence, maybe, but for me, that's enough proof of my own numbers and my own, from my own fitness of where, where I should be doing my easy running. So 152 below is on my threshold test, 151 through my other metrics for the heart rate reserve um, is 151. Um, so yeah, that gives you a great insight there to where you should be trying to do your easy runs. And with that, um, you can start to run at those um, that sort of heart rate and just see if it feels easy, if you can talk, if you can count, if you can keep your controlled breathing throughout, then you know that you're in the right area for your easy zones. And what I noticed is if you just go by the age-based ones, which I'm not sure why quite why they use that, it's probably because it's easy to use, easy for people to work out, I'm not sure quite. Um, and you're supposed to degrade as you get older, but you find that sometimes 50, 60 year olds are way fitter than some of the youngsters, so it depends on the work you put in every year is how naturally fit you are. So you'll find if you use the age-based ones, I've done two, I'm not gonna put on screen now, but one of them put my top easy um, zone at one to eight, which is just so low. I can't see, you will get benefits from like that, but you're not gonna improve, I don't think. It's just sort of maintaining, and um, it's not really quite doing enough. And the other one was at one, four, four, uh, which interestingly is just next to what my math was. But just so you know that, I don't completely trust the age-based ones. I think they're too, they're too um, cautious of being way below where you need to be. When you can just do your simple test that I've just mentioned and try and find something that's more suitable for yourself. So now you've got your zones into place. As I said, you can start putting those into practice now. Go out and do plenty of your runs at, um, say mine is 152. Uh, what I found with mine is that I was probably slightly below that. So one of my numbers was 152 and 151. I found that 150 to 148 is somewhere in there is completely comfortable. I can talk all the way around. And that way, if I sneak over um, to 15152, I know I'm sort of still in from the calculations. But it's then you can tailor it to yourself to run at those things. And it's a simple 80-20 um, formula for that. Do 80% of your runs at your the high end of your easy um, zone. And bear in mind that you can go way below that. It's fine to do that on recovery days, stuff like that. I'm just giving you the idea of finding your own zones. And then 80% of it there, and you've got 20% of it doing the fast runs, so like zone four and zone five. And with doing that, you're gonna see some big improvements, I think, uh, because you're working your aerobic threshold and you're improving it, and you're making yourself able to run for longer distances at, um, the, at your aerobic threshold heart rate. Okay, just a quick side note, actually, because I don't, I don't talk about this very much, but actually one of the hardest things in running is the discipline um, to be able to realise when your easy runs are not easy enough. So as I said, I could go to 15152. Um, sometimes that felt like it was tough, sometimes it didn't. But you just have the discipline to know that when you're heavy breathing and you're struggling to talk, just bring it back, strip it back. You're going to get so many benefits from just hanging below that threshold and have sort of hanging on just over it, you know, just make it, if you can't talk, if you can't count and talk and you've got, and your breathing's getting uncontrolled, you're probably just out of that. So have some discipline, run fast when you're meant to run fast, but when you're meant to run slow, make sure that you are doing that and you're staying below. Once you've sussed out these perceived efforts, your, your improvements are gonna be there to be seen and eventually, you won't need your watch to be looking at your watch all the time. You, you just know when you're running easy and just know when you're running hard.
And so recently, um, I've discovered one more thing that you might be of interest to you, as it is of, for me. Um, there's a, a new way of reading your heart called the heart rate variability. Um, without going too much into detail, because I've um, I've only just looked into it myself, and I'm still in the middle of trying to learn all about it. It's basically a reading they take in between your um, the beats of your heart. So it's, it's different to your resting heart rate. It's the timing in between your heartbeat, and it's an indicator of um, how your body is from a day-to-day -day basis. So, for instance, um, I went for a 15-mile run randomly the other day. It was the longest run I've ever done. This is a few weeks back. And using the app I'm going to explain about, it told me the next day to don't go out because it could see it in my heart rate. And it also does the same if you've had really bad sleep. And if your body's not in tip-top condition or it's ill from a day-to-day -day basis, it will tell you in the morning to take it easy that day because it can read it in your heart rate, basically. I know it, it seems accurate for me because I've, it's come up twice now to not work out. And one was after that 15-mile run. And one was after last week's 17 mile sort of fast effort that we just randomly did as well. So both times it knew I'd done that and it could tell in my heart rate and um, it told me to take a rest. So I want to quickly show you this app and see if it can be of help to you. So I'm going to quickly put it up on the screen now and quickly just go through a few bits with you. It's called HRV for training and here's what it looks like. So there you go, it logs in there and you can see the baseline measurement there of 7.5. It goes over the last seven days, basically. Uh, if you find the line in the middle of the in that area there, as it says, um, it's positive, and you can proceed as planned. So what you do is you take a measurement each morning with your thumb for two minutes, and it will put it in line to where it needs to be. And you've got some insights there as you gather some data over time. Uh, you've got a training load there, your correlations, your acute heart rate variation changes, uh, the trends, the VO2 max, for runners and cyclists, uh, weekly, monthly summaries. You've got training polarization for lactate threshold. So the lactate threshold, um, as you give it to results, it'll work out a pace for you and six, five, 658 a mile. It's pretty close for mine, one 650 to 710, so it's right in the middle there. So that's pretty good as a estimation only after only just a few weeks. After that is a training polarization. So that means the amount of percentage that you've been doing your fast and your slow running. You want to be 80 20. And you see, my slow running is at 76%. So it's pretty much on cue to where it needs to be. Um, and then you can keep monitor that as the weeks go on to make sure we're doing enough slow running. Um, after that, you've got your VO2 max. Um, it does an estimate. Again, it needs a bit more data to find it exactly. But my initial one is at. 53 uh, where my Garmin is at it swings between 54 and 55 so really happy with the accuracy of, of that so far um, yeah my initial thoughts on it is it does pretty well for an app that just plucks some of your stats so, so yeah I think that's a really nifty little app there uh, it does cost uh, three or four quid if I remember rightly but I think that's invaluable really to run alongside the data you get from your your Garmin uh, it runs off of Strava and um, I think Apple Health and things like that. So yeah, I think it's a good a good thing to have um, to make sure you're running, you know, running fresh and all that. It will let you know otherwise and that. So you're not going to have a risk of chance of overtraining. So uh, it's really simple to do. You just put in your thumb on the on the light and it counts it for two minutes and it works it out. And it seems to be accurate alongside my rest and heart rate also on on my watch. So yeah, I'd say give that a spin and just see how we get on with it. Okay, that's about it for me today. I really hope you've enjoyed the mini series that I've done all about different ways to calculate in your heart rate. Um, in my opinion, it's definitely worth finding out yours rather than going off someone else's method, although that method might work for you and you might fall in into the average thing where it works like that for everyone. It doesn't for, ev for everyone. So I think it's worth following some of these techniques I've showed you to find out your own zones. Even though I didn't put all the hard work into them, I'm just, I'm just using other people's formulas. But you're using your own heart rate metrics to find more personalized zones for you and who knows you'll probably get more out of your training than what you have been beforehand so if you ended up running slow because your zones are so low take a look at the different zones that you might be able to create for yourself and see if it can make a difference for your running uh, don't forget to have a look on my instagram and i've got facebook page all in the links below follow on there i've got so much more content to come now um which really starting to pick up the pace on here and I really appreciate you following along and I want us to go through it all together. So 
any advice you've got for me, fire it my way and I'll keep firing what I know back to you. Okay, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for joining me. Steve.